Omnia Pro gives you the confidence to eliminate dead water on thousands of lakes across the U.S. Exclusively through Omnia, utilize our map layers containing critical real-time satellite information to see water temperature, water clarity, and important weather data all in one place, along with one-foot contours for Navionics and detailed CMAP social mapping. Matched with Omnia's industry-leading loyalty credit program on all your tackle and gear needs, this is the only app you need in your arsenal for success on the water. Good morning and welcome back to another exciting edition of Guide Day, a new BTL feature presented by Omnia Pro that we kicked off in 2024. If you've been keeping up with Guide Day, we've done California, New York, Florida, Lake of the Ozarks, the TVA. We've done pretty much all of them with a with a handful of different guides from around the country. And kind of the, the, the point of Guide Day is to get to know the personalities behind guys who make their living on the water, uh, putting people on fish for, for a number of different things, whether it's educational, whether it's just a numbers trip, whether it's giant trips. Uh, when I think of a lake and guides and history on it, there's a handful of lakes that come to mind, but the one that tops them all, and it's a, it's a, it's a relatively new lake, is Lake Fork. Big bass. There's an 18 pounder that came out of there. It's 130 pounds caught by Trey McKinney earlier this year. You have thousand boat tournaments, the slot limit, and it's also an intimidating lake. I've been down there once by myself and I put my boat in and I was like, okay, I know they're in here somewhere, but I'm kind of scared to go anywhere. And then you also hear the stories of how many guys like Rojas started that, James Nigemeyer, guys who have moved to that central Texas to start guiding on Lake Fork. Uh, and through the Bassmaster Open EQs, uh, I've become acquainted with, we're not really good friends. It seems like we're always kind of like in the same flights or launching our boats together, or passing each other the way in line, is uh, a young dude who, if the, the career in guiding doesn't work out, he could be the brawny paper towels guy, like no problem. And that is Jack York, who is joining us from Texas and is a guide on Lake Fork as well as a dubber. Jack, thanks for jumping on BTL Guy Day. I'm excited to learn about Lake Fork. For sure, man. I appreciate you having me on. Uh, is that a fair assessment, like kind of the fame, the history behind it on Lake Fork? When you think about uh, a lake with a lot of pressure and a lot of guides where you have to 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 dot your I's and cross your T's to have success on that lake, making a living, putting other people on fish. It's Lake Fork. Absolutely, man. It's, it's a legendary body of water. You know, all the guys you mentioned, you know, Lee, Mark Pack, there's oh, yeah. Liz on, but it's a legendary place. A lot of, you know, the legends of the sport that, you know, I look up to have come from here and, you know, it's a cool spot for sure. Uh, let's get to know you because you are 23 years old. You're going on your fifth year of guiding. Talk a little bit about where you're from and how you ended up guiding on Lake Fork and some of the surrounding areas to make a living because, I mean, that's a big accomplishment to be doing it that long at 23. I appreciate it, man. So I was actually born in Nashville. My family moved here when I was probably four or five and, um, you know, my dad grew up fishing. He got me fishing as soon as I could walk is all I've ever wanted to do. And, um, you know, I, out of high school, I went up to the University of Minnesota to play football. Wasn't messing with the cold too much, so I transferred to Stephen F. Austin, um, I guess, after about two years up in Minnesota. And I got to fish in college for two years. And when I was 19, that's when I started guiding out here on, uh, you know, Fort, Nacogdoches, all those East Texas ponds as well. But that's kind of how I got into it, um, you know, and really didn't – when I first started, I kind of just wanted to, you know, try and make a little side hustle and, you know, broke college student just trying to make some money and kind of saw what it could turn into. You know, I know a lot of guides out here that, you know, you see them have very successful businesses and, you know, kind of just wanted to turn it into that. And then that obviously kind of led me into, you know, I got to meet a lot of really great people and – all but I think two, two or three of my sponsors right now I got to meet through guide trips and that kind of opened the door for me to you know go like you say fish the opens the EQs and 
that's obviously kind of what I want to transition into is, you know, like a guy like Lee, you know, he still runs some guide trips, you know, just good regular customers that he's been, you know, guiding for however many years now. But, man, I absolutely love it. Can't imagine doing anything different. But, uh, man, it's a good time. I'm very grateful to be in this spot. Wait a second. I had no clue. That's you? <laughs> He got my ass, dude. Hell yeah. yeah that <laughs> that's was... you. So that, that's like big, that's yeah. like big 10. That's oh, yeah. like real big 10 foot. I had no idea that you were a, uh, you're a big time football player. Man, I, I don't know. I was back in the day, but I had a bunch of injuries and shit. And I just, I don't know. It was Minnesota was cool. And I was glad to get to experience that for a short time in life. But mm -hmm. man, the negative 60 degree stuff and all that it just i'm a texas boy at heart man that wasn't for me so I had to get back home and start chasing some big large mouth and having some hot summers so did you fish you fish for Stephen f austin then uh in in college yeah i got to fish there two years um that's where i you know met a lot of great great buddies um it's obviously when i started guiding out there and on fork and you know fork in the summer times or any like winter break spring break anytime i was home i was always running trips here and uh you know obviously while i was in school i was running some trips on the weekends down there in knack and after i got done just kind of turned it into a full-time gig and just been running with it since, but you know, I don't, what made you think that you could guide full time? I mean, there's thousands of people that fish. There's not very many people that say, Hey, I, I want to be responsible for putting other people on fit. Was there one person? Was there one moment? Like, what was it that made you want to get into the guiding side of it and not just the tournament side of it? Man, I wouldn't say I really had a, a moment or one thing or another. I just I always knew like, catching a bass for a living is the only thing I've ever wanted to do since I was, you know, two or three years old and knew what a you know, fish was. And, uh, you know, obviously for me, that was kind of the, like, I didn't want to do the YouTube stuff and try and get into that. And I just really didn't have the, I guess the means for it at that time, mm -hmm. but guiding on the weekend, like, you know, guiding can be good money. And that was kind of my only outlet I saw to, you know, try and start chasing that dream. But Yeah. Do you remember your first guide trip? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had some dudes actually out here on Fork. One of my buddies out here, Ronnie Kelly, he's been guiding for forever. He sent me an overflow trip, and I had a, a, mo a mother, a father, and a son out. And the son, I think, was only like seven or eight years old. I think he'd only caught like one bass in his life. And it was during the shad spawn. We go out, and it was just a little half-day trip. We go out, dude caught a freaking eight pounder on a big plopper. You know, he's tripping balls about it. It was super cool. <laughs> That's kind of how it, you know, I always, you know, I'm super grateful to my buddy Ronnie because he sent mm -hmm. me a handful of overflow trips that he would get. My buddy Lee sent me a ton. Um, but that Livesey, was we're talking like the, right? Do what? Lee Livesey? Yeah, Lee Livesey. Like the Lee Livesey, the Elite Series champion from Fork, the Bassmaster Elite Series pro yeah. that the, the, the best East of all Texas time. legend. Yeah. The central Texas. That's, that's Lee Livesey. Absolutely. That guy, but okay. So, well, those guys, cause like, that's kind of how it started for me was, you know, just a couple overflow trips here and there. And, you know, some of those people turn into great regular customers. And obviously, you know, you get a good ad of a couple of people holding up some big fish, book three or four more trips off of it. And it really just kind of keeps spiraling from there, but that's kind of how it started. And, uh, you know, obviously been super grateful and fortunate to turn into a full-time gig. I mean, whenever we're not on the road, like I'm home every, I think I've only had like, I don't know, between when we got back from uh, Alabama yep. and went on leave for Oklahoma, probably only have three or four days off. So it's, it's busy, but like I say, dude, I, and I mean, even on my days off, like I still go fun fish. I just, I just want to be on the water learning every single day. And that's the cool thing about this lake. And we're going to get into more of that, I'm sure. But, I mean, it's so freaking hard to catch big ones out here. Like, we have more per acre than just about anywhere. But they're the smartest critters you'll ever chase, dude. They are very well educated. But I just want to be out here learning and getting better, you know. So part of the reason why they're probably educated is not only because it's a destination, but I'm on a web. I don't know how I'm on like the Oak Ridge Marina website. And it's just when I Googled Lake Fork guides, it said, yeah. well, here's a list of guides. Like I have to do one, two, 
I have to do five scrolls with my mouse to get to the bottom of it. Uh, and you're with with the Y, you're the last one listed on here. But I mean, there's well, there's probably a hundred guys that are listed on here. I'm looking at names like James Call. Like I'm seeing names yeah. I recognize. This is what this is what interests me. So like, how does that dynamic work with so many guides on a small body yeah. of water? Is it? I've heard that it's like the most cutthroat competitive lake guide wise. There's clicks, there's arch yep. rivals, there's nemesis. Like you could do a full documentary just on the dynamics of guiding on lake. Is that overblown or is that accurate? A thousand percent, dude. You're under. So how do you break into that? That like, do you have to like know someone who vouches for you, or how does that whole dynamic work with so many guides on one body of water? Man, it's definitely like. I don't know. There, like you say, there's clicks. There's there's so much just stupid drama out here, like grown ass <laughs> dudes that just act like middle school girls. It it really blows my mind, honestly, sometimes. But I don't know. I I try to just keep to myself. Like I literally talk to you know Lee and two or three other guys out here that you know I'm buddies with. But other than that, man, I just stay in my own lane. Let all the Lake Fork drama kind of take care of itself. But it's I mean, you see it on Facebook, Instagram, mm -hmm. every. Like there's always some little stupid beef going on between this guy or that guy group and this guy group. And I guess is those, it usually over spots or is it over pricing or oh, over everything? Anything, anything yeah. and above. Didn't like how a guy yeah. launched his boat. Didn't like how where this guy was running. This guy yeah. saw me there last Saturday. That guy pulled into my freaking spot at the marina <laughs> for lunch, so screw him. It's I mean, you name it, we got it out here on Lake Fork, dude. We need a freaking Netflix documentary for real. It's it's mind blowing at times, but that's why I say like when I first started getting into the guiding deal, especially out here, um, it really just kind of like bothered me, man. Like, you know, I'm just trying to out, be out here and make a living catching a bass and putting people on fish. Like while wow, these grown dudes got, you know, one thing or another to say about this and that, and man, I just, the more you tune it out and it's I, honestly, to me, it's kind of funny at this point, like. I don't, I'm not going to bring any names up or anything like yeah, that, yeah. but stuff that, you know, goes on on a, literally a weekly basis year round out here. It's just, it's funny, dude, but no, it's, you really did undershoot it on that, man. It's kind of crazy how much of that stuff goes on out here every year. All right, let's get on the water then. And let's talk about what uh, a guide trip on Lake Fork is like it typically the way that I've done this in the past that I like it is we'll kind of break it down into uh, into seasons. You can give sure. a little bit, uh, just a little bit, kind of break it down into that that spring, summer, fall, uh, and winter, and what kind of each pattern is like there. And then after that, we can kind of dive into specialty trips and kind of what you can expect based on what your goal is for it. So seasonally, 27,000 acre fishery, uh, north east texas fair assessment kind of north central northeast texas right. uh just for those who don't know kind of break down what the fishery is like and then a little bit about each seasonal pattern when it comes to catching bass on lake fork right so you know to start with the spring you know obviously lake fork is known for its timber um you know it's got a lot of really good offshore stuff a lot of really good shallow stuff a lot of grass and pretty much however you want to fish like we got it out here to catch them out of it um in the spring you know i do a lot a lot of sight fishing um you can catch a lot of big ones not a lot of good numbers days doing that but you'll you know if you don't want to park on an eight or nine ten eleven pounder you can do that and a lot of people do want to come out here during the spring just to sight fish you can catch them good frogging really from the spring all the way through the end of the summer especially right now we've had you know last year the lake was really low had a lot of stuff grow up um, a lot of just really good bank environment right now that, I mean, we're catching the shit out of them, frog and swim jig really? and stuff. Yeah, it's been really, really cool to get to fish it shallow this year. But, you know, the shad spawn, the gizzard deal is a little, usually a little earlier. You know, you can catch them on those big swim baits you see everybody throwing, glides, uh, you know, hangovers, stuff like that. Um, it's It's really fun. That's usually not a great numbers deal, especially now that, like, you know, the cat's been out of the bag on that swimmer deal for a minute now, and, like, everybody freaking does it. Like, you'll drive past every windblown clay point, and it's, like, it's hard to get on one these days. But that was really good. 
um, going into the summertime, you know, do a lot, a lot of offshore stuff. Um, you know, that's hunt. your jam, right? Like and I follow you on Instagram. You're always catching them on big metal, on deep diving plugs, on big, right. on, on hair. Like, I feel like if you were to pick one, like the offshore deep bite for big summertime yeah. on fork is like what you love to do. hundred percent. That's my, I like scanning, figuring out, you know, out here, that's definitely my deal though. Like I enjoy that more than anything else. Um, I wouldn't say I'm better at it than like going and scoping them in the pre-spawn or, you know, catch them off a shell bed in the spring, one thing or another, but that's definitely what I enjoy the most. And I think it's usually better for customers with it. You know, when they come out here, sometimes I'll have two or three people plus myself on the boat, you know, it's kind of hard. Like you get two or three people in the spring when you're sight fishing, like, you got two dudes or one dude just kind of sitting there twiddling their thumbs and stuff. And, you know, it kind of gets a little boring for some people, but in the summertime, like I, you know, tonight I'm going to, I'm getting started here in a couple of hours. We're going to pull up on a school. I have three dudes in the boat. They can all bomb, you know, all have an equal opportunity of catching a freaking Lake Fork 10 pounder. But I definitely enjoy that the most just because it's a little, a little more conducive to guiding more than one or two people at a time, I would say. But really enjoy the shit out of that man that's that's my deal what I'm- so they know like they're dialed in you've talked to them you say hey i got some stuff dialed in we're gonna get up here i'm gonna get you on the spot yeah you've got an angle cast and someone's someone's gonna load up on a big and probably one of the first 10 casts here and if they're there it's it's lights out it'll go down for sure and that's the other thing about this place is here in the last i'd say three or four years, you know, really since I've started guiding, I've just noticed a trend of like more and more fish. Like we still have the same amount of groups and like they still get on the same stuff, but I've seen a lot more groups pop up on stuff that like just know nothing stuff, you know, a random little hole in timber, you know, sneaky, sneaky little hard spot, just stuff that, you know, used to be close to like, you know, you hear these stories Lee's told me about like mega schools, like Kentucky Lake yeah. County of a hundred bass sitting out on Hurley's pond and like we just don't have that anymore but like some of those fish start sliding out on sneakier stuff that it's kind of cool to like watch and learn that progression of they get beat in years and years and years in a row and then they're like right, I'm not going to freaking Hurley no more I'm gonna go post up on this little sneaky tree and you know it'll only be five of us but we're all gonna be freaking giant but it's cool to do that but at the same time I mean it definitely kind of teaches you a lot about you know, just really pressured fish and, uh, you know, kind of what they do whenever they do start getting beat up and stuff like that. But, you know, it's, it's a really cool time in the summertime. I absolutely love it. Um, usually have really good numbers days, especially the biggest thing in the summertime out here. And it's always been like this from even, you know, the guys I've heard that been guiding out here since the lake opened, like, and that's why we're having this right now. You know, it's what, 10 or 11 o'clock. Like, I normally don't start my trips unless I got somebody that wants to go frogging or do something shallow in the morning. If I got a guy that just want or guys that just want to do offshore stuff, we don't start until about, you know, noon to two o'clock. Because from about three until so the, the sun goes down, that's just when these fish eat. And like, they'll be on everything all day. But I mean, yesterday, I had a half day in the morning. And then went out in the evening and yesterday morning, I think we only had three fish by noon. They were all big. You know, we didn't have a fish under six pounds, but only had three. And they were just freaking, they were there, just wouldn't yeah. eat or what she threw at them. Go out in the evening and we caught like 28 and, you know, had a big bag, 30 something. And that's just how this lake fishes. So I always, you know, if anybody's thinking about coming out here, I would definitely recommend being willing to, you know, whoever you go with, kind of listen to your guides, see what they say about, you know, going in the evening time. Because I promise you, that's when these big fish, when they get in these schools and, you know, they get to rolling in the evening time. That's when you can have like a crazy day of, you know, roll up and bust 35 in your first cast or first five casts. And uh, the evening deal is definitely kind of the juice for the summertime, you know, rolling into the fall, like late summer to fall. That's when I start doing, even right now, if if I have customers that are, like, comfortable with a flutter spoon, we'll go chase some, like, individual giants. That's how you can oh, catch really? fish out here right now is just fish that aren't quite grouped up yet, but they're still, like, making their way out kind of stuff. But, like, you won't see a fish under freaking – it's rare that you'll see a fish under 9 or 10 pounds doing that stuff. But it's, it's – And tri- that's a scoping deal? 
yeah, hundred percent scope and deal. You know, I've got my little trees just here and there that I know I can always pull up and there'll be a big yeah. one. That kind of stuff is very date wise though. So like we're, we're in the, the end of May here. So like the summertime bite starts kind of what the middle of May through what's uh, September out here. It really, it'll start. Like I've seen it start as early. We had one, I can't remember what year it was, but I saw my first post bond group pop up the end of February. I want to say it was, two Oh my gosh. <laughs> It's a, crazy freaking yeah. nuts. but you know it really like this year they started popping up on all the good stuff and about like everything they the first stuff that they get on i think that i want to say they started popping up like early april late okay March, so it's like prime time right now right now uh, last it, like like may june july those are the 100 percent. i really okay i kind of like like right now everybody's guiding a lot of people are booking trips um you know all the guides are out fishing so these fish are just getting pounded on but i personally like like july and august the best because that's when they get a little bit harder to catch you know it starts suspending a little more not as many people are out there just because it's you know it's hot as shit in texas in july and a lot of guides don't even guide those months you know the older guys out here just because it is so hot but i love those months just because you can go trips craziest numbers days you ever have whenever it, it's something stupid always like you know you usually don't catch them cranking and doing the cool stu- stuff that we do right now but you know like that hair you were talking about scroungers sneaky swim bait you can throw a meeky sometimes deep jerkers um you can do a lot of cool shit in those like really really hot months and i mean you'll have some of the craziest days of your life doing some of that stuff but I really, really enjoy the late summertime. Um, and that, like I say, all this stuff is good all the way until about September, October, whenever it really starts cooling off. And then from about October all the way until they start moving up on beds when the bed fishing is like the deal to catch, you know, be around the majority of the mm-hmm. big ones. All I do is scope timber, timber, brush piles, docks, deep docks, um, you name it, and just floaters in general. Like these fish just love to float out here. Even in the summertime, like you can catch a lot of spoonfish doing that. So but, that's more like what we've seen, uh, like what Alton Junior's done on Major League Fishing, exactly. and some of those guys. What we've seen uh, Trey and a number of those guys do in the Elite Series, like you can get on the boat with you and go do that exact same thing. You're Absolutely. getting up front, teaching. Yeah. Hey, here's here's what they look like. Here's how they are. If you know, I'll get some people that just want to watch me for like half a day and then fish half the day. I'll get some people that just want to watch all day, and then I'll get some people that want to fish all day. And I, you know, 100% will do it all, whatever the customer wants kind of deal. But that's pretty much all I do. And we're just hunting big ones. You know, I get mm-hmm. customers that give me shit all the time. I'm like, you know, we'll see one on a tree or something, and I'll pass it up. I'm like, we're not, they're like, you're not going to cast, you're not going to have us cast at that. And I'm like, man, it's just a freaking three pounder. Like, let's go find a nine or something, you know? And like, some people do just want to sit out there and catch as many in a day as we can. But I really enjoy those trips. And especially when I get somebody that's just like, dude, I don't care if we only catch like three fish, but All if right. our best job goes for 30, like, let's go hunt them up. And those are the, the really, really fun days that I enjoy. I enjoy it. So are there tough days where it is a one or, or two fish day? Like I under, I know you're talking about this at Fork, but from my experience, what I've talked to people with is like you have to set realistic expectations because I would imagine yeah. for you it's difficult because everybody who gets in your boat is expecting giants yeah. and lots of them. But like it's a really tricky lake. So what is the percentage of struggle versus slugfest? Like how many days would you book, would you say, to like have a good day? what are the what is the potential for a one or two bite day versus a 30 bite day yeah um honestly out here i would say a lot of that just has to do with the skill set of whoever i'm guiding that day you know if i get somebody that come out and i'm catching the shit out of them frog and some gator mm-hmm. grass I can't walk a frog just icy like we're in a pine you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> not catch them but if i get somebody that can come out and do some cool stuff like we're gonna catch them doing something i can guarantee okay. that it just there's always a way, and like, I run around like a crackhead out here. Like, I'll burn freaking 40, 50 gallons of gas every single day in the summertime. But, like, there's a lot of, you know, older guys, and they're successful at what they do. But, like, they'll literally post up on one depot all day yep. and just milk it. We're going to catch 10 fish here at some point. It might not happen until, you know, eight hours from now, but we'll catch them. But I just, 
I'll pull up, make five casts. If they ain't biting, you know, we're out kind of deal. But so you treat it more like, you know, if you if you've got guys who are into bass fishing wanting to run, you treat it more like a tournament day or fishing with your buddy for a day to where you're hunting, changing it up, mixing things, seeing a lot of the lake instead of just a hey, exactly. we're here, let's wait for him to swim through. One hundred percent. And I, I feel like like Lee even gave me that advice one time, you know, there's and I've heard that from numerous guides out here is like, man, guiding on this lake will really hurt you as a tournament angler. But I feel like if you approach it as a tournament angler instead mm-hmm. of like, I'm just going to go milk this one spot so I don't have to burn a bunch of gas. And, and I do charge a little more than most of the guides out here, but that's because I'm burning. You know, I'm going to work twice mm-hmm. as hard as some of the guides out here. But at the same time, I think it has helped me a lot just personally. You know, fishing tournaments is just treating every day like a freaking derb and you know, we're going to roll around until we run into them. And there are some days, like, you know, 25% of the time, I'll get somebody out here that, you know, will show up with a freaking Barbie doll Zebco thinking we're going to catch 10 pounders. And we're like, you know, we might need to go catch a crappie or something. Like, this isn't going to happen, guy. But no, it uh, really is just kind of dictated. And not like, well, I, I, don't get me wrong. I've had plenty yeah. of days since I've started guiding, but I've had somebody come out that, like, they're legit. You know, they can throw a bait caster, they can do work whatever bait we're throwing correctly and for just be for you know like this shit happens all the time out here i mean i've gone out with buddies just fun fishing and stuff before and had a really really tough day but for the most part and especially like right now when it's good i'd say that's a little more in the fall whenever it's like okay like i'm scratching my head out here and i'm trying to catch them you know what i mean and i would say the fall is definitely kind of the the turnover more than wild day. card could be really good could be that's, really tough you go out and pull up on a little shell bed. but that's anywhere in the country during that oh, time no. of the year it's not just fork right now you're dead on uh, yeah, what about the top water deal like i think you got a lot of people that want to go to fork now because they are benefiting from seeing eight yep. pound whales come out and just drill lee spook <laughs> like that, what it, if i want to get there a top water fish like how do i what's the best chance that i've got to have that happen Man, as far as like when to come or just yeah, like when to like what time of the year? Like, can you do? Do you get guys who are like, yeah, I want to see an eight pounder eat a spook? Oh yeah, plenty of that. <laughs> I love really like all of April and early May. You know, okay. toward the end, it kind of starts dying off. Honestly, October is kind of the wild card. Like that's pretty much all I'll do in October is that and kind of do a little spooning here and there. And then once it gets like start getting really cold is when I'll start transitioning into the scoping deal with just a jerk bait and all the, you know, kind of more traditional winter scoping stuff. But now as far as the top water deal, like all through the shad spawn, both gizzard and threadfin, that's it goes down during that stuff, especially when they get boiling and stuff. But October is really, really good because they'll wolf pack a lot this time or that time of year. I mean, you'll just go down no nothing banks. Like, biggest thing that time of year is just kind of putting the trolling motor on high and just covering a shit ton of water because, like, you'll be rolling along, hadn't seen a bass all day, and then you see a freaking wolf pack that, you know, the 40 or the best five will go 40 pounds, start blowing up on gizzards in front of your boat, and you just freaking smash on them doing that. But as far as consistency, I would definitely say, you know, all of April through first half of March, stuff like that for, you okay. know, if you only want to come out and target giants on a spook and stuff like that. Like right now, I mean, we're still catching them, and I think we're going to keep catching them really, really good on a frog. And, you know, you can catch them on a swim jig. I personally like to frog more, but – the frogging stuff has just been off the charts this year with all the, the new habitat that those fish have and that the bait have spawned in. I think it's keeping a lot of fish up there, but yeah, it's it's a good, good topwater lake, man. You can catch some freaking, and that's the cool thing about it is like, you know, you can go to other lakes and obviously catch topwater fish, but like there's not many lakes in the country you can say, oh, I literally have a shot at going and catching a 10, 11, 12 pounder on a freaking Zara Spook or a Kermit frog today. Like it's, it's legit. If I'm planning a trip here, uh, we already talked about how you like the afternoon. You could frog in the mornings. Uh, what What is your duration for a trip? Let's say I'm coming from out of state. This is a bucket list trip for me, and I want to book with you. What would you recommend? How many days? That type of thing to get the full fork experience and have the best chance of hitting at least one afternoon that you'll tell your buddies about for the rest of your life. I definitely, like when I get out of state, people that call me, I always, you know, I understand if you just want to come for one day, but I definitely recommend coming for two or three just because you mm-hmm. never know. You know, yesterday we had a 
a pretty bad bad thunderstorm rolled through and it just kind of made it finicky i think but you know if you get two or three days out here like we'll run around eventually and freaking do some crazy stuff like they can't hide that long but i would definitely say you know coming for two or three days um we do eight hour full days that's what i do if the fishing's okay. off the charts like we're gonna stay until they quit biting kind of deal but you know usually around dark is when Around a little after sunsets when they kind of start chilling out, but right before them, and it's chaos, but it can be a lot of fun doing that. And, you know, I definitely, I wouldn't say as far as like numbers, I would definitely go with the summertime, but, you know, tr kind of transitioning into, you know, the fall and into the winter, that's when we're targeting giants. Like I was saying, you know, we're rolling around just only looking for freaking donks. And that's kind of like the, the people that hit me up that are like, hey, man, like, I don't care about numbers. I want one big one. I'm like, come in January to March, and we're going to freaking hunt our ass up. But that's kind of the – and, like, right now, if I had somebody that hit me up, say, hey, I want, you know, shot a, a big one, but I want to go catch a bunch. Like, meet me at the boat ramp in the middle of June to August or something, and we'll go freaking tear them up, and we're obviously going to be around big ones. Because every group out here, that's the cool thing about this lake is, like, no matter what you're doing, other than like maybe fishing freaking a lot of guys in the tournaments out here, they'll catch those. You know, we got a slot yeah. catch off the bridges with little drop shots. That's kind of like the, the under juice, if you will, for, you know, I guess the community stuff out here. But Which is what, 16 inches? Yes, yeah, so in between 16 inches and 24, you got to throw it back and you can only keep one over 24 a day. Yeah. Which surprisingly, I've had people come out here before that are like, you know, we'll catch over or something. They're like, man, can we keep that and, you know, knock the sides off it or something? <laughs> like, <"Bruh, laughs> yeah, that, no, that's going back. Oh, wrong guy for that. But no, it's, it's a cool, it really does help the lake a lot. I, you know, I don't think. So if we, you did mention that real quick, though. You're all, you're cool with a guy coming on who you know is hiring you to learn, to understand more, whether it's scoping, whether it's fishing offshore. It's not just, a, a numbers in that you are cool with the guy who fishes tournaments who you know is in who says jack show me how this is done and you get him up there in the front all day like that's part of your your jam 100%. too 100 percent. i okay. do a lot of high school kids some college kids now um do a lot of those kind of trips where you know whether it's a college kid that just hires me or a, a high school kid's dad that brings him out like I, I really do enjoy the shit out of those trips where I just get to teach and like kind of, you know, pour into those kids and it's fun. You know, I really enjoy getting to get out there and, you know, like I'll show anybody anything. I might not show you like my sneakiest sneaky spot, but I'll show you kind of how I find them, how like this time of year, how I graph and then how I want to set up on fish with different conditions and, you know, different bait rotations, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, whether it's this time of year, spring, no matter when, you know, I, I really enjoy those kind of trips where it's just more about learning and, uh, you know, obviously we're going to try and catch their ass, but I do, do enjoy those trips for sure. Equipment wise, uh, can people bring their own? Do you supply it? What do you fish out of? What can guys expect? I supply everything. I've had numerous guys are like man we want to bring our own stuff just more comfortable with it totally get it got space for it i got a bass cat carry cal sts so we got plenty of room um you know i throw all six cents rods and with six for everything so that's you know we're throwing a lot of six baits um obviously they're rods um yeah that's that's kind of how i handle it but like i say i will have a, a guy every now and then that you know whether they got 28 freaking nrx's with metaniums on them they're like yeah i don't want your stuff. I'm gonna bring the gas, and they'll show up with a bunch of rods. But definitely get out full of that. How far are you from like Dallas Metro that area? Because I know that there's a lot of guys who travel for work. They get an extra yeah. day, or they want to stay an extra day and be like, "Dude, I'm gonna work, get my business taken care of, but I also want a chance to fish." Is that a reasonable drive to Lake Fork from like the Dallas area? We get a lot of those from the Dallas Fort Worth area. You know, I'm literally like an hour and five minutes from there. Um, oh, okay. So you can be on the lake in an hour and a half from Dallas, yeah. take care of your business meetings, change, right. and be on the water with you in the afternoon. 
hundred percent. I get a lot of those guys that, you know, one business deal or another in the city and they'll freaking haul ass out here either for the next day after they're done or like you say, a little evening deal, one thing or another. But yeah, it's super reasonable. All that East Texas stuff, you know, Nacogdoches, Rayburn, mm -hmm. all the East Texas lakes I got on, that's obviously a little trickier unless like somebody's in Houston. I have had some of that before, but yeah, as far as the Dallas area, Dallas Fort Worth, it's super reasonable. And that I, I have a bunch of those trips that, you know, somebody will fly in for one thing or another, whether it's business, family, just taking care of something here or there. Um, you know, haul butt out here and we'll go catch them in the evening or the next day or free kind of deal. But yeah, it's super reasonable and close. You mentioned the other lakes, uh, throw a list out of some of the other lakes you guide on. I expect you kind of do the same thing on those, but that's more if, you know, someone calls and said, Hey, it sounds like you, you're comfortable putting guys on fish on a number of those kind of historic lakes and a number of small ones too, that I don't think you even like really are cool with saying the names of, but the right guy calls it asks, like you'll, you'll, you'll carry them out there. hundred percent. So I do, obviously I'm primarily on fork. Um, do a bunch of trips on Lake Nacogdoches. That's where uh, Stephen F. Austin, where I went to college, it's in Nacogdoches. And that lake is freaking insane, dude. Like, I've caught more 40 bags out of that lake than, like, every other lake I've fished combined. Like, it's – Fork is amazing, but as far as big fish potential, like, big, big ones, you know, teeners, I've seen some crazy stuff out of that lake. And, like, you don't have to go out west for that. And – do a bunch out there, do a bunch on Rayburn and Toledo. I really don't advertise as much on Rayburn and Toledo just because I know there's so much, like, we got it going on at Fork as far as the guy drama, but I know it's just as bad out there. And, like, man, I, I don't know. I just try and stay on my own own deal on that. really don't advertise as far as trying to get new business out in that part, but I'll take my repeats and stuff like that down there. If, you know, we got a big tournament on Fork or if it's fishing really, really tough, something like that. You can always run down there and catch them. But, you know, like I say, Nacogdoches, Toledo, Rayburn, Nacogdoches, Pinkston, and Kerf, those are all kind of the smaller lakes. And then obviously you got Big Sam and big old Toledo Bend. But, yeah, it's it's a super cool area down there, man. I really enjoy it. I've got super fortunate to, you know, be able to transfer to SFA and kind of get to learn those lakes really well. And, you know, obviously I still spend a, a shit ton of time out there and just mm -hmm. still learn stuff and Rayburn and Toledo change a lot every year, but Knack and those smaller lakes are pretty consistently year in, year out. But, um, yeah, I, like I say, I'll, I'll take anybody anywhere. I mean, promise you we'll have a, an opportunity at a double digit no matter where we go. But enjoy those lakes for sure. A lot less pressure. It's uh, it's the middle of May 2024. And I know this is, is fluid and things change, but uh, price-wise to get out, uh, for a full day for that, like just kind of ballpark. What are we talking about uh, yeah. per day out yeah. here? Yeah, so seven hundred for a full day. Like I say, that's eight hours or until they quit biting. Um, half day do four fifty. Whether it's an evening eve or a evening morning trip, <laughs> one or another. Um, you know, I'm I'm willing to work. Like yesterday, I had a dude that wanted to fish a couple extra hours than what I normally do for a half day and. I had enough time in between my two trips that, you know, we just fished a couple extra hours, gave me a few extra bucks and we called it good, but that's kind of how I run it. And, um, two, three people, what do you, yeah. So I, I normally just take two. I always recommend one or two. You get okay. three starts getting a little crammed. I do charge 50 extra bucks for a third person just cause that's one extra you know rod. You got to have it out in the water. One extra person. I got to bring drinks. What on treble hook in the head goes way up on that. It freaking, you'd be surprised. Man. <laughs> Nasty stuff. Like my buddy, I think it was two days ago out here. He's an older fellow out here and he, he doesn't move that great. And he had a buddy, yeah. a customer swing a, I think it was a yellow magic or some popper swung a fish in the boat freaking buried it through his palm like he showed me the x-ray it was literally like going in this way and almost out that way and the bar was like freaking straightened out dude it was nasty but mm. yeah a lot of that stuff with you know jerk baits a lot with crank baits um you get somebody that hadn't really boat flipped a lot of fish and you know, they'll be running in a little three, four pounder or something on a deep crank. I'm like, man, boat flip its ass. And they'll freaking boat flip it right in your ankle. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, 
you do crappie at all out there? Like if a guy wants to go, wants to go catch a couple specks. I literally only go catch crappie if I want some dinner for free. Okay, dude. I, fair enough. There you go. I will say I've had customers before that like we'll go out and catch a freaking bag of bass in the mm-hmm. morning. Dude, we just brought a cooler. If it's cool with you, we'll just go sit yeah, on a pile. Yeah. I'll go fill it up and we'll freaking get out of here. But I've done that a handful of times. I'm not a crappie hammer yeah. at all. I think that's how Matt Reed kind of does it on Falcon. Like he goes out, he catches yeah. them, and then if the crappie are up in the bushes, they'll go they'll go catch them like a dozen or something before they hop right. off the water. Yes, but not like, would. I mean, like you don't you are not the guy if you want to go catch a lake fork crappie. Because there's a bunch not of guys true. who do that too. Like that's insane. Like the crappie fish yeah. in there. But you also it's, have to keep them in the winter time too. Right. Yeah. It's freaking nuts out here. We got a ton of giant crappie apparently, but yeah, I'm not the guy for that deal for uh, sure. Okay, it's one fun. more question. With all the guides and all this, like you're on the water, it's prime time like now. Are you like right next to other boats? I know there's some guys that want to experience not seeing other boats. There's other guys that don't mind. Like, how crowded is it actually? Like on a weekday, on an average guide trip, are you casting at other people's boats? Do you have like a little room to work for yourself? Does it feel relaxing out there or is it always packed all the time? No, man, it's I never do that pulling next to somebody and fish okay. stuff, especially, you know, other guides. Um, I will say like I've had customers just like whether it's somebody that's retired out here, one thing or another that if I show them a really good spot and they go out on it the next day and I show up with my customers like, I always tell people that I know we're going to fish out here. Like, Hey, I don't mind if you come fish my stuff, but like, just know if I'm out here working, like I'm probably going to pull up next to you if I have, but that's really the only time I'll ever fish next to a boat. And I've never had a, a, you know, be for a argument with anybody on the water about that kind of stuff. They've always been, I guess say just customers that are going out on their own trying to catch those fish. And they're always super cool with us pulling up next to them and kind of doing our thing. But no, I, I know a handful of guys do that stuff out here where it's like, you know, that goes back to that clicky stuff of like, okay, we're going to hold down these two shell beds so he can't get on. It's like, okay, bro, like do your thing. You know what I mean? I'll go smash on the West side. It is what it is, but no, there's, there's plenty to bounce around between. Uh, Your best, like the biggest, best big bass story from Lake Fork. Maybe one that didn't make it into the boat, but like the most insane thing you've ever had happen to you out there in all your days on the lake guiding or just fun fishing. You got to have a couple. Man, I had one. It was, this was actually me. I was out here fun fishing. Um, It was right after I caught a teen or it was at 13 and a half. I pulled out a Nacogdoches. I was at fork. I can't remember how long or how how many weeks were in between, but it was very recent right after that. And I pull up on this one mega tree that like there's always a bertha chilling on it, right? Like I know I'm gonna pull up, see a big one. Did I pull it up? I thought this thing was a freaking carp. Like carp don't get on that stuff, but like I'm like, there's no way that's a bass when I pull up from 120 out and sure as shit, closer I get and see her full shape after I kind of finagled my way to where i could get a full look at her that's a freaking giant and i get my jerk bait down to her most aggressive fish i'd ever seen dude like normally when we get fish that big out here like for sure teener class like they're very very smart difficult you got to get you know walk them all the way to the boat and they normally don't bite and and i'm telling you this fish you know how they do the looking Mm -hmm. up thing she freaking did one of those i popped it one time and she just freaking smoked it i was a hundred percent not ready i was just like tripping balls there's no way a fish that big ever act like that and i freaking lean into her and then she runs back on the tree. it's a big gnarly tree got freaking Mm -hmm. 20 sprawling out of it she rolls right back into the limb she was sitting underneath wraps me all to shit and freaking pop the line but I'm not going to say it was like a whole freaking state record, but like I promise you that fish was well north of 13 pounds. But that one's probably the one that I would say haunts me the most because I haven't caught a teener out here. My biggest is a 12 on fork. and That was a teener. (laughs) I would love to catch a freaking teener out here, dude. What percent of your clients would you say catch one over eight? Like, just to give a random percentage. Like if you have a hundred guide trips spread out across the entire year, 
what percent will you say an eight pounder comes in the boat? So I'll, you know, it probably varied just year to year, but I'm going to say anywhere between like 50 and 70 percent, just based on like five know, zero and seven zero percent. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty strong. <laughs> that's yeah, real strong, big, Jack. No, we catch more big ones than we don't for sure. It's, it's a good time. And like the other thing about out here that kind of goes back to just the whole drama scene is like I and different guides do this as well, but I'm kind of like particular about when I'll post stuff. And you obviously, you know, I get the sponsor game, like we have mm-hmm. to do that stuff, but like I'll see a handful of boats run by me and see, you know, see my boat sitting on a hole. We freaking wrecked them on. Like, I don't want to go post a 40 bag that we just caught that day and you know, may post them down the road, whatever. But there's a lot of that stuff that kind of goes on of, you know, if one thing or another, somebody sees you on a hole and it's obviously, it's a public lake. Everybody, I only have legit probably like a dozen offshore holes out here that I know for a fact, like I know Lee knows about two of them and I've never seen another boat on a handful of them. But like other than that stuff, dude, it's all, you know, fair game. Freaking everybody knows everything and a lot of, a lot of pressure on all that stuff. But no, it's, it's a fun spot, man. I love it out here. What's your availability look like for the rest of the year if someone wants to uh, to get on the books? I am all booked up until we get back from uh, uh, Oklahoma. I've got probably Which is about, the middle end, middle end of June. Yeah, minute, I think I get back the twenty second or something like that. And um, I, mean, I want to say I've got two or three days open at the end of June. And then I'll probably, as of right now, I've probably got about half of July open. July and August are really, really good months. Those are obviously going to fill up a, a good bit, you know, closer we get to that time. Just mm-hmm. repeats hitting me up last minute and people in town that, you know, have last minute travel arrangements. But, yeah, I'm pretty open in August. And I do have a good bit booked for, like, next January to March. And that's just stuff, you know, people that have come out with me in years past and, you know, done the live scoping deal and we'll go out and catch one or two giants. And they're like, dude, put me on the freaking books for the next five <laughs> years on this day. We'll go out and do this stuff next however long. But no. Yeah. Got plenty of, of prime summer dates though. For Best sure. way to get a hold of you. Definitely through Instagram, um, Instagram or Facebook. That's kind of how I book all my trips, you know, um, that just, Send me a freaking message. At Jack kinda... York Fishing, all one word. J-A-C-K-Y-O-R-K Fishing. Yeah. No spaces. Just message and kind of give me an idea what time frame you're thinking about getting out. I'll send you all my open dates and we'll get something lined up. Go catch a bag. But that's definitely the best way to get a hold of me. Did I miss anything? Anything that anything else you want to get in here that you think is key for those who might be thinking about coming down to Lake Fork? Man, that's pretty much like for the only other thing is you know like we kind of touched a little bit on earlier is you know don't come with you know understand that the possibility of getting forked is very real like Mm -hmm. you know lee livesey is the best fisherman to ever fish out here i i truly believe that he goes out the first day of the elite and caught three bass like it can happen to anybody especially somebody that's a novice angler like you can get forked in a heartbeat i promise you but you know, the potential is here to come out the, like you were saying, you know, a, a day you're going to talk to your buddies about for the rest of your life. And there's not a lot of lakes like it that, you know, no matter what we do, whether, you know, go frog, go sight fish, go scope them in the winter, we're always going to have a chance at a double digit every time that boat gets wet. And it's a fun spot to come. And, you know, it's challenging at times, but it's also very rewarding at times. And I would definitely, if you've never been, if you've been and didn't have a good time, hit me up. We'll go out and freaking try and train wreck a few, but it's a definitely a something you need to knock off your bucket list. I would recommend it to anybody. Well said, Jack. I'll see you in Oklahoma, hopefully on Saturday. Hell hopefully yeah. on Saturday in Oklahoma and not uh not on Thursday or Friday. No doubt. Well, that's so. not, well, I appreciate you having me on, man. No, thanks, man. That uh, that knocked fork off the bucket list. Like I said, there like, there's a number, uh, there's a hundred guides that you could have on. I'm sure we'll we'll revisit, we'll circle back. Like you know, I had Trevor Lowe on from Alax. I'm gonna have Josh Douglas on later this year. 
Uh, there's a lot of different guides that are very talented on that same fishery that offer different things, different styles, different experiences. And that's kind of how you get to learn about it is to sit down and chat with them. So part of this whole series was, was me wanting to get to know guides better. Uh, you know, sometimes you think, man, these guys are like burned out. They just do the same thing. They're in it for the money, but there's so many guys like you that are like young, passionate, hungry about it and are really all about watching a guy go holy cow that's a fish of a lifetime uh and that's kind of what i want to highlight so i really enjoyed that one jack heck yeah i appreciate it big time man take care all right see ya all right that is jack york uh lake fork number of different lakes in texas uh this dude has it going on i know a lot of guys uh on tour uh think very highly of him uh and his ability super chill guy so all right that is uh that's what we got for guide day on this Friday. Uh, I've got a couple really good uh, suggestions, really good comments from uh, people who have hit me up, either Matt at BassZone.com with guys that they went out with, guys that they uh, are they're currently guides who are saying, hey, I'd like to be highlighted. Uh, a lot of people have forwarded me stuff like, hey, I had a great experience with this guy. I'm trying to kind of work through that and figure out how and where. Uh, I want to focus my attention with this guide day. But like I said, if you're a guide who you think uh, would be an awesome guest on this, if you've had an awesome guide experience where you're like, dude, this guy really needs to be uh, highlighted and focus on guide day, go ahead, shoot me a DM, send me a message, send me an email, matt at basszone.com. But other than that, we'll be back Monday, 8.30 a.m. with a live show. Big shout out to Jack York. He is headed to the lake with a 50 to 70 percent chance to put his guy on one over eight pounds which i don't know where else you're gonna get that so all right this has been another edition of guide day we'll talk to everybody on monday see ya